How's it going guys? Blended Bench here. In today's video, I'm gonna show you guys how to go about animating your rigged characters inside of Blender. Let's get into it. All right guys, here we are inside of Blender. You have your character modeled, textured, and rigged. And now you wanna move forward to animating. How do you go about animating inside of Blender? The quick response is you want to keyframe bones in different positions throughout the timeline. Now, visually, how do you do that? You wanna ensure you toggle on your rig and then you want to select your rig change the mode from object to pose mode pose mode is the only place inside the blender ui where you can start to create the keyframes for the character's motion now if i wanted the character's head to rotate here you see at the bottom i'm on frame one so i want to select the bone that correlates with the body part that i want to move or have animated select that Press I on the 3D viewport to bring up the keyframe menu, and I'm going to select location and rotation. So at the bottom left, you see I have a yellow dot, which is a keyframe. That's basically like a picture taken in that moment in time. I want to slide the slider to about 10 or 20 keyframes and switch from uh, the move tool to the rotate tool. Pick a position that I'm satisfied with. And once I'm satisfied, I'm going to press I once again to bring up the keyframe menu and select location and rotation again. Now that I have two keyframes, I now have an animation built. I have one in one position, and if I go back to frame one, I have one in this position. Now if I press play, you can see that it's being animated to transition in between both keyframes. So now that's a quick example of an animation in Blender. Now you can get really fancy and you can open up the animation uh, graph editor and you can tweak these so it runs a lot seamlessly and smoothly. Now I'm going to toggle back on my rig and once you get really advanced and you start animating multiple parts at a time, there we get this beautiful animation. So if I go back to keyframe one and I, I'm just going to toggle off the rig. I created some shape keys, which are different poses for the character. And I have a video and I'll have a link to that video on how to create shape keys in this video. So if I wanted to go to create a, uh, animate a shape key, what I could do is select my character, go to um, the object data properties, choose one of these, say if I want the eyes to blink, I want to create create shape keys. That's something that just can't be done inside of pose mode. Select any of these shape keys that I have here. Let's go to I blink and hover over the value section. I can press I to create a, create a keyframe. And at the bottom left, you can see it's similar to how it looked in pose mode. I have my keyframe there. I'm going to go to about frame 15 or so. And then I'm going to change the value from zero to one, which is a full blink position. And I don't have to keyframe this if I don't want to. If I turn on um, automatic keyframe, or I can just press I once again. And if you toggle through uh, 1 through 15, you'll see that the eyes open and close, as well as the head turning because the animation is still there. Now you see the eye blink. And if we want to have the eyes open again, we can go back to maybe frame uh, 23 or so, or 22. Copy this first frame here, control C, and then press control V. Now the eyes open. Now you can see the eyes blink, open and close. And to change the timing on the blink, what you want to do is drag select or just drag the keyframe down on the timeline. And it's going to change the timing of how soon the character opens the eyes from that blink. And this is really useful to know that timing is really important. Timing is one of the 12 principles of animation. That's something that every animator needs to know. Now, something that's also cool to know about animation inside of Blender is you don't have to press 
every one of these uh, buttons and press I to go to keyframe, you can toggle on the auto key button here. And now it does an automatic keyframe depending on the position you are on the timeline. So here I'm at 39. If I slide up to 50, I can slide this value to be uh, maybe a squint halfway. And it created a keyframe for me. I can slide back to maybe 70, 68, slide this slider to be fully closed, and it's gonna create a keyframe as soon as I let go, as you can see on the bottom. And the same thing can be done inside of pose mode. I wanna select my rig, go from object mode to pose mode, and I'm gonna just rotate the head, and you're gonna see that once I let go, and I'm, once I'm satisfied with the positioning, it's gonna create a keyframe on the bottom and there you go. See that's done. So if you want to go back to frame one and play it, you'll see that it's being animated with the blinks and the high and the uh, eye, uh, the head rotation. And this is how you make the animation look a lot more lively: is by integrating multiple animations at a time versus the robotic head movement. So if I wanted to, instead of have the head move from left to right, and I wanted to have have more realism to it. I would go somewhere in between and have the head maybe rotate downwards. So now when the character rotates his head, there's a dip and then it goes to the um, left versus just straight across where it's so linear. Hopefully this is making sense to you guys. And if you like the video so far, give it a thumbs up. I don't get too many likes on the video. So if you guys do that, it definitely means a lot to me and it helps the video get shared. So let's play this back once again and let's toggle off the rig. Let's see what we got. So here you can see the linear movement happening from left to right without that in-between action or pose. It looks really robotic. And this is what you want to avoid when it comes to animating. You need that secondary action, that follow through after. And that's why you need the um, graph editor so you can tweak the little parts because that's what makes the most difference is the little subtleties. You see that head movement? Wow, we got the blink. And I definitely would have blinked the character faster than that. This is how it is. In the next video, I will show you guys how to start exporting out the animations once you're satisfied. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up, comment, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.